If I had to build a brand new app tomorrow, would I build my backend in TypeScript or Go? The honest answer is probably a little bit of both. Let's talk about it. Before I get into, you know, exactly where I would use which, let's first kind of talk about these languages for backend development and how they sort of compare. So starting over in the Go world, Go is super fast to write, super easy to write, super fast in runtime, and it is extremely easy to vertically scale. The language is super efficient, it's garbage collected, which TypeScript is too, but the garbage collector in Go, I don't know how they made it work so well, but it works really, really well. So Go is super easy to scale vertically, which just means that if we have like one CPU instance of it running, if we just scale up that CPU to be more and more powerful, we can deal with any amount of requests super easily. Go is a super efficient language and it's super easy to scale. So it's fast, scalable, and easy to write. Great stuff. Now we go over to the TypeScript world. It does not scale vertically. I know, yet. Yeah, no, I'm not entertaining that. TypeScript does not scale vertically. Now you can make TypeScript scale, of course, but that is going to require either serverless or K8s. And K8s are Kubernetes that's effectively horizontally scaling, which means that we're creating more and more Docker images. So we can split these horizontally, which means we make more instances of our app versus in Go, it's really easy to just keep one instance of the app and just make that one instance bigger and bigger. So that's the sort of difference is that in TypeScript world, we need to either horizontally scale or we need to scale via serverless or something like that. Then in TypeScript, we're going to get solid performance. I mean, it's not groundbreaking, not super fast, certainly much, much slower than Go and much less efficient than Go, but it's still good enough performance. And especially if you're really just only doing IO type stuff, you're never going to feel it. If you're just reading and writing from a database, TypeScript is pr plenty, plenty fast and there's no issues. But when you get into more complicated CPU heavy stuff, you're going to want to be using Go. Now also in the TypeScript world, it is super, super easy to write. I think both of these languages are pretty easy to write, but I think TypeScript is even more intuitive to write than Go. Go has some little quirks to it that are kind of weird and TypeScript has pretty much become the dominant language for borderline everything at this point, front end and back end for better or for worse, JavaScript is everywhere. So it's very easy to write, no issues. You're gonna have no issues hiring for it, anything like that. Then of course the TypeScript package ecosystem is pretty incredible. There is huge amounts of innovation happening in the TypeScript world all the time. Next.js, Prisma, Remix, TRPC, all of this stuff is constantly changing, growing, evolving, and you're not getting that as much in the Go world. There is exciting stuff happening in the Go world. Pocket base is super cool and there's a lot of really important stuff being built with and in Go, but it's not quite as flashy and not quite as big and crazy and well supported as TypeScript just because more people use TypeScript. Go is less popular and it's more slept on in a lot of ways. So you're going to get better support over in the TypeScript world. But with those two things put next to each other, I mean, it seems like you can get a little more ease of use in TypeScript, but on an objective level, Go does seem better. It seems like you're going to get a faster, easier to scale, cheaper runtime for your backend. So it seems like a no brainer. Just use Go. But it's not that simple. Applications are not built in a vacuum, and there's something we need to think about when architecting these things is how is this all going to work together? And maybe 10 years ago, it would have been really easy to just say, oh, just use Go. If we're just going to be sending requests down to a front end and all we need to do is that, yeah, just use Go because we're going to have a client side. We're going to have our client side code, which can just make requests to a singular Go server and then send it back down. No issues. But Things have changed, and we've got some crazy new stuff over in the TypeScript world, specifically these meta frameworks, the Next.js, Nux.js, Solid Start, Svelte Kit. These frameworks have changed the game. These server-side rendering TypeScript frameworks have made a huge difference. And I think for me, the sort of draw bounding line between these two, to be completely honest, is how close do I want my backend to be my with how close do I want my front and back end to be? Do I want these two to be super interconnected and I want them to link borderline one to one? Then I want to use TypeScript. And if I want them to be fairly disconnected and have my back end be kind of agnostic and be able to use, be used on any platform or anything, I want it to be in Go. So the first thing I'm going to say about using Go is I would always use Go if I need a standalone back end. So that means that I'm just spinning up a REST API that is going to send and receive um, responses over HTTP or create like a GraphQL endpoint that's going to send um, responses over uh, the GraphQL protocol. 
So if I was creating a standalone backend, I would do it in Go. For the reasons I listed above, the scalability, performance, all that stuff, it just can't be beat. If you're not getting huge DX improvements, I wouldn't do it in Go. If you're basically just creating a REST API on an objective level, Go is better and it's faster. And for me, that's what I would go with. But you're not always going to be creating a standalone backend. So when would I use TS? Well, that would be when my front end and back end are tightly coupled. And then that is going to be in parentheses, Next.js, Nuxt.js, Svelte, Git, Solid, Start, etc. So if I would, if I were using one of these frameworks, if I was using a meta framework and I was basically just wanted to read and write out of a user's table, I would use TS for my backend. And if I was going to write a TS backend, I would write it in one of these frameworks. These frameworks would be my backend. I would not make a separate instance for it, not make an express server, a nest server, whatever. I would make it in next or next. So what do I mean by tightly coupled? And that basically just means I want to be able to call a fr function on my front end and then do basically that exact thing on the back. So what are some examples of this? A uh, really good one would be just, I need to update a user's settings. So update user settings. If I want to go to my website and I want to go to their profile page and I want to update their email notifications or something like that, that's tight coupling because I'm just going to be basically making a request to an endpoint that's going to be like, hey, switch this, update this, and then send me back down that it updated. Great. And now what I can do is by tight coupling these two, I get all the benefits of a shared language, which allows me to use a framework like TRPC to link between the two of them. Because the key here, when we're writing our front ends and back ends, we have our client over here. So this is going to be our client. And then over here, we have our um, server. So our client and our server are over here. And in a traditional model, there's a pretty strong line in between these two, especially if we're using like a single page app or something like that. The client is going to send requests over to the server and the server is going to send down responses. And this is going to be um, request response, um, REQ, RES, HTTP. So we have one way of doing this, which is going to be a request and a response over HTTP. If these two were going to be super detached and all I was going to do is just communicate between the two with request and response and HTTP, this would be a Go server for me. I would want to get the performance and scalability of Go. But where this gets interesting is if I'm going to be using something like TRPC. Now, what is TRPC? If you're not familiar with it, this is a brand new TypeScript package that basically makes a front and back end development it makes full stack development stupid easy to do. It's become kind of the hit new thing online. It's gotten super popular, super fast, and it allows your front and your back end to communicate with ease. So it basically allows you to share types from the front to the back end. So if I was going to use TRPC, this would be pure TypeScript for me because what I can do is I can share these types from my server to my client. It's all strongly typed. And that is a super powerful thing. And it's absolutely something you should look into if you have an app that's not complex enough to really need anything more to this. If all your app is gonna be doing is basically just glorified crud, if it's like a, it's like an accounting management app, you need to go in and you need to read from a user's table and then get their profiles out. And then you need to see how many accounts they have. And then within these accounts, you need to update some data, read some tables, all this basic stuff. TRPC is gonna be great for that because they're super tightly coupled and you can share your types from the front to the back end and it can make full stack development a breeze it makes it super easy for anyone to write an entire app all by themselves versus if you wanted to do versus if you wanted to do that with like having a separate go back end that would get a little harder because you're not going to be able to share those types and you're going to have to sort of deal with things going over http this is hard to describe if you've never used trpc before and next week i'm going to be using it a lot live but um, definitely go look it up. There's a million videos on it, but go take a look at this and sort of see how you can connect these two with strong typing. And when we're using these new frameworks like Next and Nux and all this stuff, it's really easy to host these in a way that we kind of, it edges out a lot of these issues that we have with TypeScript. So the scalability is a big problem. So we need to be using something like serverless, but the platform Vercel, which is where you're generally speaking, going to be hosting this, it's just innately serverless. It's going to set up and do all the serverless config for you. And there's no issues whatsoever. So basically anytime you have tight coupling and you can get away with using a framework like Next or Nuxt or SvelteKit or whatever for your entire app, 
do it. If you don't need a separate backend, don't make one. Now, I know this sounds like I'm ragging on Go, and yeah, I do really like Go. And in my case, for Insider Viz, I use both TypeScript and Go for my backend. I have on a real live app right here, this is running both TypeScript and Go. And the reason for that is because the tightly coupled stuff, which is going to be my user management, my subscription management, my like basic stuff in my database, that is all going to be managed with TypeScript and Next.js. So I have a Next.js server doing all of that. It makes it really easy. But then if I want to deal with more complicated stuff that's more detached, that doesn't really care about my application state, then I use Go. I use Go for the API that manages all of this form data, all of this stuff, all the financial data you see on the site. I use Go because I need higher performance performance to deal with this massive, these massive quantities of data and all that stuff. So really, I think where this comes in is, first of all, I would use Go in a standalone backend. Second of all, I would use it in a place where performance matters, where each request is going to have heavy CPU compute and stuff like concurrency and, you know, yeah, stuff like concurrency actually starts to matter. If that doesn't matter to your app, if you, again, if you're just reading and writing out of a user table or something, then just use a TypeScript app. But if you want to use something more performant, you need to do something a little crazier, which in the real world, you probably will. More often than not, a real app is going to end up needing something this crazy. It's going to need something more serious. You're going to get beyond just crud in a to-do app. That's when languages like Go start to become really valuable. When things go beyond just the trivial reading and writing out of a database, that's when I would move over to here. So hopefully that sort of answers the question on where I would use which. I know this was sort of all over the place, um, which is unfortunate, but this is kind of a hard topic to structure because this is very much a feel thing. Telling you when and where to use something is a hard thing to do. It's hard to intelligently and clearly not. I don't want to just lead you astray on this and just be like, give you a definitive, always use this, always use that. But then when you don't give a definitive, it gets kind of wishy-washy because I'm um, well, basically my thesis is, well, they're both good, you know, just use what you think you should use, but that doesn't mean anything until you have the experience with it. So I think what I would do is I would look at really give TypeScript a shot, see how all of these frameworks work and all this stuff. And then once you've understood that, then when you need something that's more standalone and you need that higher performance, go into the Go world. Now, if you're not a full stack developer and you just need to be making APIs and you don't care at all about the front end and it needs to be completely agnostic, then I would look at Go because there's no real reason to bottleneck yourself with TypeScript if you're not going to get benefits out of sharing types between the front and the back end and all that stuff. If sharing code isn't going to help you, then don't do it. So again, hopefully that helps. If you enjoyed, make sure that you like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Got brand new stuff coming all the way through the 28th of February every single day. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Have a great day.